the Asian would have killed the mother, but the baby absorbed it instead. What bizarro universe is this? Welcome back to Chernobyl episode four. But first, I wanted to go over a few questions that were posted in the comments. Thank you again for leaving comments. Um, I, I really appreciate it. In the last episode, I talked about the lead graves and pouring concrete in them as unnecessary. But it did actually happen in real life with Chernobyl for people that died with uh, ra radiation poisoning. It also happened at the SL-1 accident in the United States back in the 1950s. I'm sorry if I confused anyone by saying it was unnecessary, but the scene in the movie, or the, the episode 3, was indeed historically accurate. I was just arguing it would be a unnecessary from a radiological perspective. If you like this video so far, please join me in my journey to a clean, sustainable, safe nuclear energy future by liking, subscribing if you haven't, and leaving a comment on what you thought of this episode. Thank you very much. So you can see in this scene they are sweeping a field, these Chernobyl liquidators, and these clicks are from a Geiger-Muller detector. You've probably heard of this one, it's a pretty common detector. It's actually a fairly crude device um, as far as radiation detectors go, but its main function is to let you know whether a surface is contaminated. Um, this is this is pretty realistic. This is what these sort of guys would you would be using after an accident. More clicks equals more radioisotopes. Um, these are also used in radiological controlled areas at a nuclear power plant if you're going through a contaminated area. You would take a much smaller version of this and you would run it across your your feet to make sure you were um, uncontaminated after leaving an area. Hours of exposure is fatal. The one on the side, Nina, 2000 Röntgen, one hour, fatal. So right here they're talking about um, cleaning up the debris on the roof of the Chernobyl reactor building and ox buildings. It was two roofs, they affectionately, affectionately named them Katya and Nina. He's saying that, uh, he's saying Katya has an exposure of 1,000 Röntgen per hour and two hours exposure is fatal, and Nina at 2,000 Röntgen per hour bringing it set to one hour being fatal. That math makes sense, but are these numbers accurate? All right, let's do some math. So Katya is 1,000 Röntgens per hour. Now, assuming 100% gamma, which is your best case scenario, that converts to 10 million microsieverts per hour. So just one hour is guaranteed death. So, yep, they, uh, on the show, they underestimated. In fact, just 35 minutes would be likely death, um, especially if you're, if you're untreated, which I don't know how well these guys would be treated in this case. And a realistic scenario would be um, 90 seconds, and that's the dose limit for U.S. radiation workers and life-saving operations. Now, I know this is the Soviet Union we're talking about here, but if this sort of thing happened in the United States, this is this is the path that we'd go, just uh, just 90 seconds apiece at, at that dose rate. For Nina, everything's cut in half because it's 2,000 Ronkins per hour, right? This is an interesting one because uh, they actually underestimated in this case, whereas previously in this show, they actually they were, you know, blowing everything way out of proportion. 12,000 Ronkin. If you were to stand there in full protective gear, head to toe for two minutes, your life expectancy would be cut in half by three minutes, you're dead within months. Even our lunar rovers won't work on Marsha. Always love the affectionate name for this, Marsha. 12,000. That is... that is insane. All right, let's see if they're lowballing again. So Masha, again, same process. 12,000 Ronkin per hour, assuming 100% gamma. 120 million microsieverts per hour. <laughs> this chart I have doesn't even go that high. So, two minutes. Two minutes doing the math figures out to an extremely severe dose. Um, Bleeding, hair loss, four to six weeks, especially if untreated. So, not necessarily going to kill you, but is horrific. Um, it'll probably kill you without without medical attention. Three minutes, that's also fit. Now we're getting into fatal within two to four weeks if, if untreated. 
Seven and a half seconds is what you would be allowed to do if this happened in the United States. <laughs> Not sure how much cleaning you'd be able to do. They also talked about their uh, rover not even be able to do it. We'll we'll take a look at that a little bit later, but man, can you can you imagine the dose rate of this? That is it's just insane. It's all right, it's free. It's a little early. Really? Drinking? In a radiological emergency, do not eat or drink. This is because internal dose from, say, alpha or beta sources of radiation is much worse than external dose. And you can only eat or drink in certain areas where it's safe, and these guys aren't in one of those areas. <laughs> Put it on under your balls. No? No, no, you can wait until the radiation gives you a cunt. I can actually see where he's coming from in this case. Now, a few millimeters of lead won't, won't actually do much, but it... Lead does stop some of the gamma radiation. Reproductive cells are more susceptible to it than other parts of the body. While this scene is silly and probably not meant to be taken seriously, there is actually some basis for this in real life. Never seen anyone wear that, though. But during a real-life radiological briefing, all personal protective equipment is discussed, and the big trade-off is time. So, for those of you who don't know, it is far more cumbersome to do a job wearing, like, a big, heavy respirator um, than it is to do a job without wearing the respirator. So, if the respirator reduces your dose by 50%, but the job takes twice as long to do it with, uh, with the respirator, you're better off not wearing it. Well, today's your lucky day. You, me... That ugly Armenian in the tent, Garo. We do animal control. Animal control? Yeah, they're radioactive. So they have to go. Well, he's right. Every animal's radioactive. People are a little bit radioactive. Okay, I can get what he's saying. Now, what he really means is they are potentially contaminated as a result of the accident. And you don't want the animals to run around spreading contamination, possibly getting other surfaces uh, contaminated. Radioactive means it produces, say, alpha, beta, gamma radiation, etc. But contaminated just means, yes, dir they're dirty with radioactive particles. There's a big difference between the two. <laughs> Though I forgot to mention that, according to Episode 3, the Chernobyl universe, um, radiation spreads like COVID. So maybe he does mean radioactive. I'm working for the Central Committee. So in this scene here, we see um, Yulina, our composite um, nuclear physicist slash investigator. She's looking for restricted documents on the RBMK reactor design. It is crazy that it is kept classified and the secrets are even kept from the reactor operators at the plant. The only people that knew about it at the plant were the party members. Um, a reactor operator needs to know everything about how their plant works. As a senior reactor operator, former senior reactor operator, this is terrifying. I need to know everything about the reactor in order to make the right decisions. Germans. Reverse one. <laughs> So they were able to use um, drones, those remote rovers that they talked about in the earlier scene, to, clean, to clear the 1000R and 2000 Rontgen building. But now they're using borrowed German tech for the 12000 Rontgen building. This is an ultra high field. I don't actually know the limit for typical electronics, especially ones back then. But high enough radiation fields will actually damage the electronics in drones. So they can't operate the drone anymore. What now? Detected level of radiation was 2,000 Rontgen. They gave them the propaganda number. So here's part of the problem. They asked West Germany for this drone, but they gave them the low number, the ones that the Central Committee has been sharing with the world. And it's possible a, a drone that's more resistant to radiation could have been used, but 
they didn't ask for that because they didn't use the the real high dose rate of 12,000 Ronkins per hour. We mentioned 2,000. It's another enduring issue with the Soviet cleanup. Exploding bullets at an exposed nuclear reactor? Well, no, no, no. Let's go. This scene cracked me up. Do I even need to explain why that one's a bad idea? <laughs> All the potential for even more collateral damage. Also, for anyone who's seen The Office, looks like Paul Finch got promoted to general. Working area, you will each have no more than 90 seconds to solve this problem. Let Sending people in this time. 90 seconds. Going back to our graph, so we're some way between the ultra-highly targeted dose they use for radiation therapy during cancer treatment and the ext same extremely severe dose that we talked about earlier. Man. There is no room for error in this case. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know how accurate these numbers really were um, in terms of what they said the dose rate worked versus reality. I'd imagine the fatality rate would have been much higher or they actually didn't stay the full 90 seconds. I know scenarios like this existed in real life during uh, Chernobyl, where people worked for just maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and then they swapped out the people to continue the job, because the Soviets have so many people, they just filtered them in and out. But can you imagine being asked to do this? They're like, yeah, so this robot failed. They probably didn't tell the guys that. The robot failed, so we're going to send people into, that, that, into the radiation field that killed a robot. That is just crazy, crazy. And what if you what if you trip and fall? What if you stumble? You get tied up for more than ninety seconds for whatever reason. No, no margin. But hey, they they got a bonus. They got eight hundred rubles, which is it figures out to about twenty five hundred dollars today. Though you're heavily restricted to what you can actually do with it because this is the Soviet Union that we're talking about here. <laughs> Oh, poor guy. So I hear it, but I don't actually see a um, Geiger Mueller detector anywhere. So I think the clicking is just for the viewer, like the cameraman who's not really there. Picture your detector that's not really there just to convey the drama of the scene. Um, they're carrying a lot of equipment for a 90 second job and some of this debris included lead, so very heavy to lift with those with those shovels. And every millisecond counts in in this scenario. So uh, again, I couldn't imagine. Um, I thought this scene was a good was a faithful depiction of the spirit of these sort of things. Again, that while the numbers might be high, um, real jobs like this occurred during the Chernobyl cleanup. Reactor runs at low power. It's notoriously unstable prone to swings in reactivity. I so I'm going to save the majority of my reactor discussion for the next episode because I believe that's where they go over the majority of that. So please stay tuned for episode 5. The short explanation is low power operation is where you are at the most vulnerable. They struggled to maintain power during a crazy test due to the buildup of Xenon-135, a fission product which is a huge attractor of neutrons compared to uranium in the core, so it stops the fissions from happening. Reactor operators actually call this poison, and it lowers reactor power sharply. So, the operators withdrew control rods in order to maintain power. That sort of thing makes reactor power go up. During the test, they shut off feed water pumps so the main turbine can coast down, which increases a steam void. And in RBMK reactor, you have a larger steam void, reactor power goes up. Then, the increased fissions from that steam void um, burned out some of the xenon. The xenon-135 absorbs a neutron, becomes xenon-136, which does not have the same neutron capturing properties. Reactor power goes up. And then they do the reactor trip. So the reactor trip, which is fully inserting all control rods at once, it actually causes a slight increase because 
One, they're graphite tips, and graphite moderates neutrons to the point where they cause more fissions. So that's going to increase reactor power slightly, as well as the effects on the void geometry would also increase reactor power, which is the exact opposite of what a reactor trip is supposed to do. Uh, but it does have that initial jump, which is a major design flaw with the RBMK reactor. The rest of it was all operator-induced. Your end result is 10,000% reactor power. And there's your accident. Not a position you will ever want to be in. It's horrifying. The radiation would have killed the mother, but the baby absorbed it instead. Her baby. Oh, Lord. What bizarro universe is this? N no. Just no. So in this case, they're talking about the pregnant woman from the previous episode with radiation spread to her like COVID. Completely wrong. And saying the baby protected her. The baby is inside her. So if anything, the radiation would cause more damage to the mother first. For a baby to protect her, the baby would have to be outside of her and she would have to be cradling the baby. Where did this even come from? Was it an old wives' tale or something? In reality, babies are more vulnerable to radiation as any fast dividing cells are. In the US, the annual dose limit for radiation workers is 50,000 microsieverts, and for declared pregnant workers, it is decreased to 5,000 microsieverts. Just to be conservative, there is no evidence of increased health risk until 100,000 microsieverts. Recently, a woman posed with her baby bump right next to a um, spent fuel dry cask storage um, container just to prove a point about how safe it is. Big props to this woman here. That was, that was awesome. Man, I was disappointed because Chernobyl Episode 4 actually had... wasn't nearly as bad as 2 and 3. They actually had some things that captured the spirit and did a few acceptable breaks from reality, but nothing that I thought was too crazy. But this one, mm, this was the, uh, <laughs> this was probably the cra one of the craziest things I've seen in this show yet. Um, so yep, Chernobyl is continuing its trend with some accurate info, with some acceptable breaks of reality, and throwing in some crazy outlandish stuff. Um, I did find it interesting that this is the first time they threw some underestimates into the mix as far as the radiation dose is concerned, but let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.